Hi, welcome to the QNX Virtual Campus Lecture Series. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking to Toma about the development tools. QNX has a number of really innovative development tools that uh, are really helpful to improve a developer's productivity, and uh, Toma's here to tell you a little more about that. Hi, I'm Tom Fletcher. I'm a senior software developer with uh, QNX Software Systems. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, one of my favorite tools that we've developed and that I've had a hand in developing, and that's the System Profiler. Uh, the System Profiler is a component of the IDE tooling, the Momentix IDE tooling, and it allows you to visualize kernel instrumentation log files. Um, it helps you with performing the analysis of those log files, and you can also do a limited amount of capture and control from the, within the IDE and within the System Profiler. Um, so to get started, we're going to have some uh, screencasts that I'm going to talk through, and uh, you should be able to follow along in general principles uh, through what I'm doing in your own system if that's what you want to do. So the first part is to get a log file into your uh, IDE. I'm assuming you started up, you've got a workspace, and you've got a target configured. Then if you want to use the IDE to do a data capture, what you would do is you'd click into the target navigator, choose the logging option, and say you want to do a kernel event trace. Based on that kernel event trace, you'll get a dialog. The dialog will show you options such as which events do you want to include, which uh, timing uh, do you want to do, do you want to do it based on number of events in the log file, or do you want to do it based on just pure timing. Uh, where you capture it and whether you pull the log file back into the IDE afterwards. So we're just going to go with the default settings, right? We're going to pull a log file into the IDE. Um, so this will take, the default settings are three seconds, so we'll just do a three second log file capture. Click it, away we go, we're waiting, we're waiting, and we've got it back across now. So once you've got it in, if you're using the logging option, it's going to open up into the ID and open up an editor automatically. Now for most of the analysis work, we want to be working within the system profiler perspective. Uh, you can do this work in any perspective. The system profiler perspective is nice because of the fact that you've already got at your fingertips a number of active views that are related to working with log files. So the default presentation once you open up a log file is you get an overview, a system summary. And the system summary is great for sort of an at a glance what's going on with the system during the period of time that this log file captures. Uh, you see a pie chart, you know, nice graphic visualization uh, that gives you an indication of four main categories of work. Whether something was uh, idle, whether something was uh, in kernel calls, interrupt state or whether it's actually executing user code. So those four categories for the most part are self-explanatory. Interrupt code is interrupt handlers and general interrupt processing by the system. System state is anytime you're entering or exiting the kernel, the time that you've actually spent in the kernel. Um, idle is obviously anytime that the CPU is idle. And then everything else that's going on in the system is considered as user time. So Using that information, we can now go back and take a look and see, well, mm, in this particular log file, and probably a log file for your system if it's just an idle you know, system that you're just capturing information from, you're going to see that there's not a whole lot of uh, general uh, activity and it's mostly idle time. You can also see in the summary view that we've got a timeline display of CPU usage as well as overall event distribution. So this gives you an opportunity to sort of see that there are particular areas of a log file that are of interest that may want to inquire into further. Um, zoom in, uh, take a look at, and we'll get into the tools that you use for that in just a minute. In addition to the overview and the timeline for CPU usage, we provide a quick summary of the individual processes in the system and some additional statistical information uh, that may help you better understand the characteristics of this log file. Uh, we provide running time, ready, block time, as well as the total number of events that each one of these processes are providing. Now, something you may notice is that your total time in a blocked state, for example, may exceed the overall log time. And that's okay because processes are amalgamations of the individual threads. So you can actually open it up and see for every individual thread how much time is being spent blocked. But when we sum it all up for a process, of course, that's going to be a much longer period of time. Um, still an interesting value. So the next section that we're going to talk about is that we've got this overview and this log file that I'm looking at doesn't have a lot of really, uh, really interesting activities, mostly an idle system. So what I'm going to do is 
let's take a look and see. We've got a couple little blips that we can see in our overview. Let's take a look at those in more detail and see if we can actually find something uh, that's of interest. So the System Profiler Editor is a multi-paned editor. So you can actually pull up and look at multiple different activities, um, different contexts for your log file. So we're going to go and switch to the CPU usage context now. And so we'll go to the drop-down menu that's inside of the editor, we'll select CPU usage, and we'll transform into that view now. What you're seeing here is, again, a timeline display of CPU usage distributed over the period of uh, the log file or the area that you're zoomed into, as well as a breakdown for the individual threads in the system. And you can see this information both as a time-based uh, information, or if you want to see it as a percentage of the window that you're looking at, you can go into the preferences and change that so you get a better feel for um, you know, the activity of the system. In any case, when you select processes or multiple selections out of that list, the CPU usage chart will actually display the amalgamated values. So you can actually quite quickly run through a list and say, you know, if I were to take these processes together, what's the total CPU consumption going to be? In this case, we don't have a lot of uh, CPU, high or under CPU consumers outside of the idle thread, but we do have this thread that's PROC NTO thread 9 um, that's consuming quite a bit of CPU uh, relative to all the other CPU consumers in the system. So if we want to take a look at that, uh, we selected it, we'll see the chart, and we see that it's got a couple little peaks that may be of interest. Now, in order to dive into more detail about the actual events going on, we want to switch into more of a timeline display. And so we've used the CPU usage to figure out which of the particular threads in the system we're interested in looking at. Now we're going to go into the timeline view and actually take a look at that particular thread in more detail. So we're going to switch to the timeline view in the same manner that we switched to the CPU usage view. We're going to toggle the editor, bring it across, and you can see here that now what you're, you've got is a list of all the processes in the system. Uh, unexpanded with little tick marks at every place where there's actually an event that's taking place. If we scroll up and down we can see that there's several processes in the system that they have an initial state but they aren't actually active during the entire uh, period that we're looking at so we can reduce that uh, that scroll list area by simply adding a filter and saying we want to go into the saved filters, pre-configured filters and say I'm only interested in seeing those processes which are consuming some CPU. So we apply that filter, our list gets much smaller and now we can go into the individual processes and expand them. So if we go into, for example, PROC NTO, we are interested in thread 9, so we'll go open that up and take a look. Now we can select thread 9 and PROC NTO and see what's going on there. You can see the individual tick marks in the timeline. This is a very handy, quick visual guide to where activity is in the system. In the same way the CPU usage gave you trends and blips for areas to look at, the number of little hash marks or ticks in the timeline can give you an indication of areas where there's a lot of activity in the system or not a lot of activity. So we can see here for CPU uh, or for thread 9, PROC NTO, there's a couple of different little blips that we want to look at. So that's what we're going to do next.